around going on the grabbing some parts for another bike that I've been working on run down here grab these parts down here at Smithfield Harley hopefully they got what I need and uh, I can go ahead and get that project knocked out for this before this weekend yeah, it's a little nippy outside I didn't put my coveralls on, so I'm a little bit chilly this day. Like, it's like 50, but there's a decent amount of wind, and I'm just a little bit chilly. Not that it's particularly bad or anything, it's just, ah, I should have been a little bit better prepared. What do you got here, a tanker truck? Is it a Pete? Looks like a Peterbilt. I always thought those were cool. One day I think I was going to retire and get me a truck like that and just run loads on the side, have something to do, and then three or four days a week work, and then the rest ride bikes or whatever. Thought about getting like a little garage on a long bed truck or a long, uh, or stretched out have a spot where I could just pull the bike in that way I could just basically camp out of it and that way I'm not actually paying to do what I want to do at least that was my idea we'll see if it works out or not I still have quite a few years left before I get to that point but I think that would be kind of fun to for me at the very least I would enjoy doing it because you could travel around the country and then uh you can get two or three day trips in while uh, not actually paying for any of it because the truckloads will be paying for it. And at least to me, that seems like that would be a fun and uh, interesting way to travel around the country and see everything. Now 
heavy pit traffic, so time to just chill out and let it ease on by. Ain't no real rush. Just stretch it out a little bit. Uh, I really wish it would warm up just another like 10 more degrees. It'd be perfect. It's like 50, 55, 59, somewhere in there. And I got a hoodie and long pants on, but nothing really all that fancy. Ah, old trooper trooper. Ah, glad I slowed back down. That would have been no bueno. Have to remember he's back here on the way back. I don't think I'm coming back this way. always in a hurry on 95. I don't understand why. Like, if you stop once, you just lost all the time you made up. But, like I said, it's like this car's probably going to try to slide around just... Maybe not. Yep, there he goes. He's going to try, and he's going to get absolutely nowhere. Because there's absolutely nowhere to go. And I'm very tempted to just come up and pass him again, just because... I might do it just to fuck with them. And I'm kind of an asshole. better to let people like that go. I mean, there's no real point in, like, trying to push them, like, I'll go up there, aggravate a bit, he'll flee flying through there, and if there's a policeman up ahead, he'll be the one that catches it, not me. So when you're traveling above the speed limit, be smarter, don't work harder. Always let someone else be the fall person if you can help it. It's preferably someone you don't know. Uh, we're just sitting here hanging with traffic and in, in North Carolina, it's uh, 15 over is an uh, automatic license loss and every single person out here is doing that. It's like, I don't understand why they don't either just remove that or make it normal, but I mean everybody, all the residential vehicles that aren't 18 wheelers are going 85, 90 mile an hour. And uh, to me, that's reasonable to me. I, I, I think that's a reasonable speed with the way cars are, the technology is. But, you know, the lawmakers and I guess the engineers that design the roads uh, for the entrances and exits, it doesn't necessarily, uh, a lot of the exits aren't made to, uh, be taken or used when cars and vehicles are traveling this fast. 
and um, to me that's that's the main issue with the speed limits like our roads are just not designed they were designed around 55 mile per hour originally and then now we go up to like 70 75 80 in some places eight I think 85 in Texas and um, nobody actually drives like that everybody drives 15 20 over on the interstates because well the cars are so good they're able to do it but uh, the older vehicles and like trucks and stuff are not able to do that and so you end up with a huge discrepancy in capability versus uh, uh, the legal aspect of it and to me it's just it's just kind of like an unspoken agreement now but um, every once in a while it'll just be like yeah we're gonna screw you because you just happen to be the one going fast by yourself or you know and you get a bunch of people breaking the law together and suddenly it's just like it's not that big a deal and then when you get one person that's out there breaking the law it's like oh well yeah you're really in trouble now but it's like you have 15 20 50 people all breaking the law it's like yeah we're just gonna tell y'all chill it down a little bit and to me it's like both of them are fit it's like if you're not harming someone or being a menace or doing anything unusual to other people to me you're following the uh the spirit of the law which is basically to not cause harm to other people not inconvenience other people that's following the spirit of the law and then you have the actual letter of the law and it says oh you can absolutely not do that and where it should be should be somewhere in between um, I always tend to follow the spirit of the law for laws that I agree with and to me that's all I care about and that's all I ever will care about uh, the letter of the law is not as important to me I don't agree with some of them and I just flat out won't do it I didn't sign it I don't agree with it why am I going to do it I mean that's just how I believe and how I think about it yeah, I mean, it's like you, know, you have other people that think that, oh, you actually have to follow the letter of this law, and uh, we're going to screw you over and penalize you and all this um, because you have to follow it exactly to this. But in reality, no one does that, so it's very biased, and it's just... It's like just roll. It's just like throwing cardboards at a wall, and wherever that particular spot it lands on, that's who gets screwed. And to me, it's just cherry picking, and I'm just not a big fan of that. Like I said, I mean, and of course we got all the cameras and all this other stuff. And like I said, most people should follow the spirit of the law, in my opinion. And um, as long as you do that, I don't really have an issue with you. Uh, I mean, when you go out and be like reckless and, and start endangering other people, that's where you need to get knocked down a peck or two. But, you know, it's just, it's an interesting uh, debate on all of that. And, you know, we're getting to a point in our culture where everything's getting pushed one way or the other and the way I see it and understand it is uh, a lot of our issues are not really that big of an issue when you really sit down and think about how to solve it and then it gets politicalized and radicalized and everybody has an opinion on it that's probably wrong and it just skews farther and farther apart when in reality you only needed to go a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right and get a workable solution. And then you suddenly have two people or two groups that are just way apart. That uh, just absolutely are nowhere close to coming together. And depending on who's in uh, power at the time, it shifts one way or the other. Back and forth, back and forth, but nothing ever actually gets done. And that's kind of the thing of our country now. Um, we just have a really big issue of uh, being divided and neither side wants to really actually solve the problems that we're dealing with. And that's just where I kind of see it. And, you know, it's like 
a lot of our problems, like the racism thing that everybody keeps harping on, it's not really that big of a deal anymore. You have some people that are absolutely racist, but they're extremely few. And if you actually go outside, walk around, talk to people, you don't see it all that much. And the few instances that you do see it are really, really bad. And then everyone thinks it's that bad because uh, our media system is set up to uh, sell and propagate negative news. Because everyone reads negative news. The people aren't really wanting to read positive things. And uh, it's, it's a thing we've made ourselves. Like... People will click on something negative about somebody before they click on something positive just because it's more interesting they want to read about the problems or they want to hear about it. You know, you can talk bad about people all they want. If you talk good, let's say 20, 50 people, if you talk bad, a couple hundred. Everybody that's making money off of media is going to print something negative because that's where their money's coming from. That's what's driving the, their engagement and all that. So, I mean, it's just one of those things that uh, everybody seems to go on because it's low hanging fruit. Everybody picks the lowest hanging fruit. Less effort, most reward. I mean, makes perfect sense to me. And, you know, once you understand why, everything sort of starts making sense. A lot of people just aren't interested in why and how. They just want to get in and get out. They want something, they want to pick the low hanging fruit because it's convenient, it's fast, you know. And that's what most people are looking for. Which, I mean, is completely understandable. There's a, that's the whole reason we have fast food. A lot of countries don't have fast food. We have fast food because it's the lowest hanging fruit on the tree. You go in there, you grab it, and you just keep it moving. like we're down to one lane 55 mile an hour construction zone so we just chill going through here last thing you want to do is endanger a road worker a lot of guys get killed out here every year and I've got a lot of friends that do construction out here I ride bikes with and you just want to be kind of mindful like I said it's not going to hurt me any like I said I'm going to get there up in a minute or two whether I go 55 or 65 or 95 or however fast you go through here the construction zone is not really going to cost you a whole lot of time uh, I may be wrong because we may end up coming to a standstill but we shouldn't we should be alright we should be able to keep moving even if we go through here like 35, 40 we'll be perfectly fine Looks like they're doing bridge work. Yeah, looks like they're working on an expansion joint. That is important. These bridges are getting somewhat older and they need more maintenance. So I completely understand that. literally cost us maybe 30 seconds maybe not all that big of a deal you just kind of got to chill when you see stuff like that maintain your awareness and looks like they've done some serious logging over there that's new since I've been down here that's kind of cool all that used to be trees Oh, they all, all this area in like eastern North Carolina has really, really started to grow up and get expanded. We've got a lot of people moving in, apartment complexes being built, you know, new gas stations coming in that you normally haven't seen over here. Like, everything's just like growing up and expanding. Like, you have really old places like the Quality Inn there, and then you have like these brand new places that are like super nice. Um, not really like a motel, but like you have like nice hotels, like you have the outlet stores up here, you know, the little side street on the side of the there's a camping supply store, 
Um, and then you have like houses on the other side. You know, it's just all kinds of, uh, it's a giant melting pot though. You have a factory, I think that's what, a mattress or a furniture factory. And uh, you just have a lot of stuff out here. And it's just all kind of mixed together and built as you, as you grow up. So, I mean, we're getting over here to the outlet stores. Yeah, oh, there's Harley, so this would be my exit coming up here. I'm just going to slide in and chill out. Carolina Premium Outlets, where you can buy all the crap at a reasonably decent price. You can buy all your knickknacks, and it's halfway between New York and Florida. Which is the main reason all this stuff is here, like all three counties here, it's the halfway point between New York and Florida, or realistically, New York City and Miami, if we're being honest. Like, everybody travels down this road, and this is halfway. Maybe not perfectly halfway, but it's more or less halfway. Halfway is halfway, if you know what I mean. You'll know when you try to drive it. This is where you get tired and want to quit. If you don't get caught up in like the Richmond, Baltimore, DC traffic. If you can get through that reasonably good coming back from New York, you're in great shape. If you get caught there, yeah, you're just in trouble. in here because there isn't no traffic coming. I hope they're open. I may have. Ah, they should be open. It's Tuesday anyways. I see a lot of bikes out here. And they're doing all the parking stuff. Yeah, let me slide up here in here. Then. I don't know where I'm parking. I'm going to park where I'm going. Because I do what I want to do. Ha, good enough for me. See if I can find out where the park is. It will be good. See y'all later. 